cold evening in Manchester as evidenced <laughs> with the menstrual cramps how did you guys come up with such a perfect name I don't even know I don't even remember I think we had a list of names I don't remember any of the other ones I think maybe we asked on tumblr <laughs> <laughs> hey tumblr works tumblr works yeah, it is. <laughs> it's because I like the cramps. Oh, yeah. And then we didn't realise we'd be a band, so we thought it'd be punny if we were like the menstrual cramps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that works. And this year, you guys had some real, after the fact, controversy after you played Rebellion. Mm. What you guys said, do you have anything more to add to it about the older people, older bands, rather? I do. Who? Yes. <laughs> fuck Rebellion. <laughs> and fuck all the bands that play at Rebellion. They're fucking... Not all the bands. Yeah. Hashtag not all of Rebellion. But, <laughs> like, the bands they book, it's like, oh, yeah, they're trying to be more inclusive and, like, try and get more female non-binary bands and left-wing punk bands that play at Rebellion. But, like, it's still not a welcoming event whatsoever. And they still put on bands like anti nowhere league who are like really transphobic and homophobic it's not exactly welcoming if you're booking them mm. and then you expect bands like us to play yeah. and like share backstage area with them and like yeah. share the same platform with them at the same festival and it's like what are you trying to achieve here apart from a row and a fight do you know what i mean yeah. like it's just stupid like punk is supposed to be progressive and like that's just sending us backwards in the wrong direction and people at Rebellion just don't want to listen up. Well, that is something I've been seeing a lot lately, is people saying, you know, punk shouldn't be political. <laughs> what That's the what fuck? Exactly. That, that's the definition of punk, it's political. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whether it be politics or social politics, or I just can't fathom it. And did you guys have any, because there was a lot of backlash against you from it. Did you have anything face to face or? Yeah, because the, well, the band that was on after us, um, their fans obviously started to come in um, and they kind of were a bit more right wing. So then they obviously were like shouting at us from the front and threw a drink and told us to get off stage. So it's just that crossover of fans, I suppose. Yeah. And then the security guards at Rebellion told us to not go anywhere on our own. Wow. So That's pretty intense, yeah. Yeah. And did you guys stick around or did you go home after that? We went home. <laughs> <laughs> we stuck around for like 15, 20 minutes yeah, to talk went. to people and then, and then we left. Yeah, yeah we didn't stay. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you with that. And um, you were also on the BBC talking about a bit of needing protection after that event why do you think that 
speaking your mind and talking about everybody having equal rights, everybody is the same. Why would that need you guys to have special protection? What do you think that is that's causing this? I think uh, people who are kind of from like the old punk scene maybe just kind of expect it to stay how it was. Mm. And I know there was a lot of violence and stuff and they kind of say to us like, well, that's expected if you're in a punk band, then you're going to get beat up like everyone else did. So that means that you will as well. <laughs> Uh, you need to get your head kicked in to like earn your stripes to be punk like yeah. we had to do it so you should have to do it as well like <laughs> I'm of their age and I just cannot fathom this I simply cannot fathom why you guys should be or anybody should be it blows the mind yeah all right, let's leave that aside because you guys are very outspoken about a lot of things. Fracking, being inclusive. What makes you want to talk about that, about the issues that you see happening around you? Um, I don't really know what makes me want to talk about it. I think I always just have. Yeah. And like, I just have these opinions and like, I just want to voice them. Like, we said we didn't set out to be a band. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just because I was angry about something and ran into Cooper at, at home. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, oh, right, a song about it. So we did. And, like, we didn't set out to be a band. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's not necessarily... The most important thing isn't, like, the music and being a band. It's what we're saying. And it's not, like... I don't know, I, it just happens to be a message that we all agree with and like it's just another platform for us to be able to voice our opinions that we would say anywhere, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like a, another platform to do that in. Yeah. And for somebody like me, it's like, oh, they're talking about what I, they're talking about, they're talking, it's almost every single song you guys do, it's like, yes, thank you, somebody's saying it. <laughs> so for people like me, and I know there are a lot of people like me out there, Thank you from all of us for getting out there and speaking about it and talking about the important issues that are happening in society, in the world, for all of us and for women. Menstrual cramps, I mean, that's something we shouldn't be talking about, but let's face it, we've all had them. Yeah. You know, I think so. there's a lot of like, um, in like British culture, it's like, sweep everything under the rug like there's certain topics you don't talk about yeah. like in the dinner table mm. or like just because we're such a polite nation like we just don't you know you shouldn't talk about politics shouldn't talk about money shouldn't talk about religion or whatever like yeah. and I just think like that's just stupid like it causes a lot of crises if you don't speak about things like mm. mental health and what's going on current affairs and political happenings that are going on like it it causes fringes and it causes extremities mm -hmm. and also causes lots of like stigma and people should be able to say all of these things and break down these barriers mm -hmm. and yeah like music is another way of doing that yeah. and it's a way to get people in who maybe hadn't thought about mm -hmm. things they like the music they he then they hear the words and yeah. it's like oh shit yeah what they're saying makes sense mm -hmm. and and it helps people to open their minds yeah. i think i hope so yeah <laughs> And how long have you guys been going now? <coughs> Two years? Nearly three I think years. it's nearly three years. Oh. Yeah. But obviously, like, as the, this four piece, how long have you been? Just since January. We had loads of different people come in and out. Mm. And, yeah, obviously, me and Amelia started it on our own. So, as, and we didn't realize we'd be a band. So, it wasn't <laughs> like a planned thing. <laughs> It just grew organically, and that's yeah. not a bad thing, yeah. because it's, it, it says to me that you guys are speaking from the heart and really doing what you want to do with it. And that, I think, is what punk's all about, is talking about what you find important and going out and just doing it. So. <laughs>
um, the DIY scene has been very helpful for you in, as far as a band and getting out there and being heard? And it's definitely more inclusive than loads of other scenes, mm. like loads of other genres. Yeah. Everybody, like most people in a DIY scene, like they lift each other up and share opportunities and stuff. So yeah. I would say so, yeah. And uh, you're at the Garlic Bread Club tonight. Have you had any of their infamous, this year, this time, homemade garlic bread? Yeah, we just yeah. ate some. Yeah, it was so nice. Yeah. Palm oil free. Yeah. Palm oil free, homemade garlic bread vegan. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's spot on. 10 out of 10. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it was good. So, you know, can't complain about that. Um, so what's next? What are you guys planning on doing in the near-ish future? Um, we are supporting Amo and the Sniffers on tour again, mm -hmm. and we are currently writing a new album that is going to come out in 2020 mm -hmm. at some point, <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to go on a tour with that. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have to tour Europe next year as well, oh. but obviously we're just kind of waiting to see what happens with the, the government and Brexit, so... That's. <laughs> Who knows? We shall not talk about that god awful B word because <laughs> you will get me on a rant worse than you guys go. So, all right. Well, if anybody wants to buy your material, where can they get it? Um, our merch is like available through us at gigs or mm -hmm. just messages on Facebook mm -hmm. or Instagram. We don't have like any other site or band camp or anything like that okay. so it's literally just through us directly yeah. and then I'll post it yeah. <laughs> myself and I'll wrap it in postage that we've got lying around the house and send it to you in a ripped up carry bag but I, that's recycling that's yeah, not exactly. a bad thing I don't buy any packaging to sell I just use packaging that we've got yeah and I just have to ask one last thing because I just got splotched yeah. by some water you too yeah oh, yeah <laughs> but you were using the conditioner I use as a pomade. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, well, I don't like to use gel because it's bad for your hair, so yeah. I use conditioner as gel. <laughs> well, I have learned something tonight, so yeah. thank you for that. <laughs> and I cannot wait to see you guys on stage, so thank you very much. Oh, yeah.